Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number six, I believe, of the MPL and we're up against Johnny GB and his Oregon Douglets. Uh, we have played him before in the MPL minors and we are here, we both got promoted and we are here to play him again. And this is a really interesting matchup. Um, I really like the team that I was able to put together for this matchup, but uh, he definitely has some major, major threats that I'm concerned about. But uh, I'm going to take a screenshot right now. Okay, so we see the Scizor, Tangrowth, Nihilego, Crocodile, Kiram Black, and the Alamomola. So, right off the bat, no Zero Aura. That is super interesting. No Zero Aura. Uh, no Yuxi. No Yuxi is actually uh, re reasonably huge. But other than that, pretty much most of the things that I was expecting. Uh, his only removal should be the Mega Scizor, I believe. Um, so, I will keep to my strategy of just trying to get up webs and then kind of letting my Darmanitan go in a little bit so uh i could definitely see a crocodile lead is there anything that i would want to do i could probably just lead off with with um noivern that doesn't seem too bad i could also try to lead off with the galvantula hmm. yeah i think i'm gonna lead off with the noivern here This is going to definitely be an intense matchup. I... I don't know. I still feel okay about it, but I don't know. I don't know how to feel, really. Um, he's... He has a lot that I need to break through. But... I do think that the match does get a lot more interesting once I do get up webs. Doesn't have to cure him first. So that's super interesting. I am a choice spec Snoivern. And he could be a Scarfed Kiram, which would be really interesting. I could go for a Spex Draco turn 1. Maybe this was a counter lead, but what would I reasonably leading off with? Maybe the Mill Tank, I guess? This is, this is a very interesting turn 1 because I'm pretty sure that, yeah, Draco should always KO in this situation. Even if we give this thing max HP, max special defense. Yeah, I think the only set that takes a Draco is going to be a Habanberry set. And... Getting a Draco damage off on something. No, but Scizor would be the most likely switch in. So I probably just want to U-turn here. Um, Scarfed Ice Beam would be insanely unfortunate. But I'm going to click U-turn. And if this thing is... Okay, it's not Scarfed, but not getting the Draco off right away. Um, That's going to be kind of unfortunate. I think I can go into Scizor here reasonably well. Maybe the better play would have been Miltank, but I do really want... Goes for a sub. Okay. That is honestly surprising. And now I don't know whether or not to fear some sort of an HP fire or something like that. But even if he did want to set up a sub, I have Infiltrator Draco. So that's probably going to be my play overall. But I don't know how fearful I should be of a Hidden Power Fire. So I don't know. If we think this through, potentially a sub, dual dance, er, sorry, dual stab and roost. Would he have room for Hidden Power Fire? I don't know. Either way, I think this, the only, my my main thing that this wants to check is the Kiram, so I think I'd be fine U-turning here. Getting a slower U-turn just to, goes for an Earth Power, okay. Okay. We've seen that this thing is not Scarfed, and apparently it wants to stay in on a... On a Noivern. But again, Noivern is Infiltrator. Uh, if I see Frisk right now, I'll 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 turn back. But no, I did I did um make this Noivern Infiltrator. And I feel like I just have to click Draco. Right? There's nothing really else to click here. Uh, I hope I didn't give this thing something that's not Infiltrator, but yes, okay, we do get the Kiram down. At the cost of what, like 40% on my Scizor? It's not the worst thing in the world, 
obviously not great but uh getting the kiram out of the way relatively early yeah no okay so i honestly did struggle because i really did want frisk noivern in this matchup um but his team was relatively straightforward so i didn't really see the biggest need in the world to to kind of have to um figure out a bunch of his items i felt like i would be able to feel out his team reasonably well so that's the only reason i did not end up going for the frisk well no also the obvious reason was because of the sub kiram uh but i'm gonna go into my mel tank um but yeah no i really did want to bring frisk but i knew the sub kiram was such a big likelihood that i had to bring infiltrator let's go for the power gem this is the most specially defensive mon that i have and that was a crit so that's not ideal but uh i think he has to somewhat respect a an earthquake here and i feel like i want a milk drink i feel like i want a milk drink i'm gonna click milk drink does withdraw and let me go back up to full so the next time then he lego comes in i will be in an okay position it does bring in the tang growth which is interesting probably did expect me to just to click earthquake which i definitely thought about just clicking earthquake in that situation part of me wants to click fire punch just for no other reason just to gauge damage onto this tang growth but uh the better play is the better play to go into scissor it might be it might be scissor can also roost up even if this thing well this thing could have hp fire it's reasonably likely for this thing to carry hp fire but i don't know i'm not too too sure about that yet uh this thing might want to click knockoff do i have anything that's really okay being knocked off probably my galvantula is the best thing to get knocked off if, if you want he's either gonna go for lead seat or the knockoff i think either way galvantula would be the best thing to go into here I see the knockoff as the most likely move to come in right now, but I guess we're just going to see right now. Yeah, just go for the knockoff. Okay. So, there's my expert belt, but... Uh, I can just set up webs. I can also just click thunder. I, assuming that I'm going to scare this thing out, I think clicking webs might be the better play. Does withdraw. Uh, the Nihil Lego comes back in, so I can pretty freely go back into Mill Tank. But, uh, the bigger thing here in this situation is that I do get the webs up. So, whatever Scarfer, uh, he has out there is going to be mitigated a, a decent amount. And that's going to allow me to go back into my Mill Tank. And I unfortunately do not have great answers for this Nihil Lego. And honestly, the best answer that I do have is my Mill Tank. So... I'm gonna have to play with this a little bit. Um, the way that he's been playing the Nihilego so far leads me to believe Scarf. But I don't want to assume too, too much too early. Um, I don't want to assume too much too early. And now I think I'm much more safe just to click Earthquake. So I'm going to. If he wants to make the play to Tangrowth again, then... That's something I feel reasonably okay to enough to deal with. If it does go back into Tangrove, then I might be more okay. Goes into Alamomola. That's very interesting. I do have Heal Bell on my on my mill tank, but there's the earthquake. I can go back into Galvantula. I don't want to eat a toxic with this thing. Especially when, like I said, this thing does have to kind of take on the Nihil Lego a little bit. Um, my Scizor can also take on the Nihil Lego. Actually, yeah, I'm going to just go into Scizor right now and hope that I don't get Scald Burn. But this thing is a really big opportunity for me to roost back up to full on my Scizor. And I don't know. I, I'm going to have to judge based on what he does here. But part of me thinks that he, I think I feel like the most likely situation is he just clicks Toxic right now. Um, regardless, I think my play would be... Yeah, okay, there it is. I think he's gonna try for a Scald Burn on this turn. And I think my best play would be to... 
Oh, this thing is not leftovers. Is it Wakan Berry? Could it, could it be Wakan Berry? Um, I don't know. Wakan feels more the most likely to me, but I'm not too too sure about that. Um, let me see. Let me see here. What is a U-turn realistically doing to an Al to an Almamola? Um. Wow, if this thing is fully defensive, U-turn is doing pretty much nothing. But I think also we potentially speed tie. I didn't put any speed into Scissor, so uh, we pretty likely speed tie. I still think U-turn is the best play in the situation. Um. Yeah, that does absolutely nothing. It is Rocky Helmet. Okay, that's that totally makes sense. But I, regardless, I think Galvantula is my best play. Uh, Galvantula, I think is my best play. Galvantula invites in the Nihilego. Galvantula invites in the Nihilego. Maybe the better play would be to go into... Also, yeah, I think based on that damage, I think we can assume that, it, that it's max defense. But what's a Noivern Air Slash doing? Oh man, even Noivern, even Draco Meteor is doing a whole butt ton of damage here. Maybe Noivern's the better play to, to eat to eat the Scald and not care about the burn, and then just click Air Slash. His best switch into Air Slash would be the Nihilego, which would be unfortunate. But at that point, at that point, it's still free milk drink for my mill tank. I think, I think, yeah, I go into Noivern. I think that's the play. Specs Air Slash just does so much damage to the rest of his team. Goes for a Wish. Is he trying to pass the Wish? I don't think anything's even that weak right now. I'm just going to click Air Slash. Goes for the Protect. That's, I mean, that's fine. Um, He might be trying to Toxic me. He might be trying to... I don't even think I've ever revealed that this thing is Specs. Well... I don't know, he might know, but I don't think he knows yet. I don't think he has reason to know that yet. Yeah, regardless, I just click Air Slash again. Um, this looks like it does close to half. Oof, is that is that a crit? That is not a crit. That's just a straight up 2-8 KO. This thing could try to protect stall me right now, and I'm, and I'm super curious as to whether or not that'll end up being a free switch into my Galvantula here. Regardless, I think I have to take that play. Either he switches out for the Regenerator, or... Or, uh, he tries to protect here. But regardless, I think I have to take this Galvantula play. I don't think he just stays in and lets me take this thing out. Yeah, there's a Protect. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, I can click Thunder. I can also click Bug Buzz, right? Oh wait, I don't even think this thing is max HP. Yeah, it might not even be... Oh, it's because it's because the default set puts in a lot of special defense. Okay, yeah, this thing's max, max defense for sure, for sure. So how much damage is a Bug Buzz doing? Oh, Bug Buzz should take this thing out. So I can Bug Buzz pretty freely, and no matter what wants to come in, Bug Buzz does a very decent amount of damage here. I'm going to click Bug Buzz. I'd be super curious as to whatever wants to come in here, but Galvantula just, just does a butt ton of damage to whatever wants to come in. In comes the Crocodile. This is potentially a KO. Now, to be fair, I only count this out um, with Crocodile um, with Expert Belt, but uh, this is going to... Yeah, the, even if this thing is Scarfed, it can't outspeed me next turn, and, and it can't retaliate with anything, but that is a straight Oko. That is huge. That is huge. No rocks on my side of the field. Noivern can come in and out pretty darn freely. Um... His best switch in would probably be the Nihilego here. Um, Alamomola is going to get Thundered. Tangrowth is going to get... If he brings in Scizor... Ooh, he does bring in Scizor. Alright. Alright. This is more or less exactly the type of situation that I wanted to be in because... Um, all, the best he can do is bullet punch me, and if he takes a turn to 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 um to defog, then 
then Mike Alvantula can um can two hit this thing with HP fire. But let's see. Let's see a max attack Mega Scizor. Yeah, I don't think I have to worry about two bullet punches. And again, if this thing takes a turn to, to, to defog, then he gives up his, his Mega to me for not a whole heck of a lot. There, I'm super curious as to whether or not there's a defog. Because I can... Yeah, there it is. Because I can get off a... Oh, and I can pretty freely click Thunder now as well. I mean, if he wants to make some wild play and go into, um, and go into Alamomola, then I pretty freely click Thunder, right? Yeah. I mean, I have to hit it, but, um, yeah. I think, I think his end game is he's trying to do this so that he can set up his, his, uh, Nihilego to win in in the end game because this is almost 100% a scarfed Nihilego. But here's the thunder damage. There we go. Okay, okay. And I really have no other option but to go into my mill tank here. I think my mill tank. My mill tank should be able to eat up whatever he wants to go for. Um, I wonder how much I want to play off this, knowing that this thing is scarfed and going into Scizor, but I think right now, my number one priority has to be to just click Milk Drink and keep this thing healthy to be able to 1v1 this thing. He does go for Sludge Wave. I think he's fishing for a poison? He must be fishing for a poison. I couldn't imagine another reason to want to stay in. I also have been making a, a lot of switch plays, so he could be trying to capitalize off of some sort of switch play. But... I mean, I have Earthquake. I don't really have to play those types of games in this situation. And... Yeah, I click Mythical Trick again. I have no reason to mess around here. Um, when I know that this thing has to be able to take on this um this knee lego as much as i really wanted to make some sort of crazy flex play in that situation um i have to be able to take on the knee lego uh in in later games so i don't think i have to worry about that i'm gonna go into i'm gonna go into um my noivern again and honestly part of me wants to click if this almola stays in and like clicks toxic or something uh, part of me really wants to click U-turn because at this point I think he wants to start going in with his Nihit Lego because that's probably in his mind the best uh, way for him to win. Maybe just clicking, maybe just clicking, um, trying to aggressively go into his Nihit Lego is his answer, assuming that I will want to air slash again into the Alamomola. That's where my head's at. But. Uh, there's me switching out. Yeah, unfortunately, Noivern doesn't do much of anything in terms of uh, air slash damage. Does make an aggressive switch. Do we see... Oh, we see the Tangro. Okay. That's even more interesting. I wonder what he expect me to go into. I wonder what he'd expect me to go into. Regardless... There's no way he stays in. I click U-turn every time, right? Right? He has to expect me to air slash. If he, expects me to, if, if he expects me to air slash, then he has no reason to go into Scizor, and he saw how much damage I was doing to the to the Alamomola, so I don't think he would stay in in that capacity. I have to click U-turn. He's going to go into the Nihilego, right? Because if I give him a turn by clicking air slash, he goes into the Nihilego, and, and, and I give him a free, very free turn to click um, Power Gem against my Noivern. So I think this is what I have to do. He does stay in. So I think I go into... How healthy is Galvantula? Yeah, Gal Galvantula might still be the play. Because Galvantula here... Can set up webs again. 
And if I get webs up again, then my Tauros is in such a fantastic position. Is that hidden power? No, that has to be ice. That has to be ice. Yeah, there it is. But I can get up webs again, and even if this thing wants to, um... Even if this thing wants to... Uh, take me out in this situation, I can 100% make this trade here for, for the webs. Because by getting the webs up again, that allows my Tauros to be also beat the Nihilego now. Uh, without really having to worry about too, too much. But what do I go into? Oh, now I just go into Darmanitan. So I'm going to cut in here and take on the rest of the match because uh, there is a whole lot of back and forth here. And spoiler alert, this match ends up going to timer. And uh, more or less, one of us forfeited before the match ended and went fully to timer, but uh, we kind of do get into a stalemate situation, you, you guys can see. Uh, I do bring in my Darmanitan pretty, um, pretty convincingly, but uh, it doesn't really do much other than get walled by the Alamomola. So here, I end up trying to go into my Noivern, trying to get a little bit of something going. Um, I, I think I wanted to just drop a Draco here, uh, try to do something here, yeah. I tried to get as much damage off on this Albumola here as possible, because I knew, I, I, I can identify pretty easily here that, um, it's going to be the biggest threat for the rest of the match, uh, in terms of me be, being able to, you know, fully break down his team. But I don't, I don't want to take any dox damage, he might be stalling me, he might switch out here, uh, as well. Uh, he goes down to the tank growth, gets so even more regenerator back, and uh, I know that this is going to let me go into the scissor. And we've already seen that uh, this thing carries HP ice, so I don't think this thing can really touch my scissor at all. Um, and I can always roost up on it, do whatever I need to do, but I just end up U turning out, uh, doing a decent amount of damage, taking Rocky Helmet damage, but. Uh, or I might have knocked that off earlier. I, it looks like I did. Um, in any case. He knocks me off, so now, I, is this where I get my specs knocked off? Yeah. So now I'm no longer specs, and I'm still taking a decent amount of toxic damage. I do have heal bell on my mill tank, but I just haven't found a decent situation where I could really pull that off. Uh, I just go for an air slash, hoping beyond hope that like I can crit, I can, I, I kind of thought that I was going to do some more damage, um, obviously getting my specs knocked off, um, hurt me, I, I think I might have even calc it and, and um, and seen the damage, but that was assuming specs, and I and I got it knocked off, and I probably forgot to take off, to take off the specs. But regardless, I'm doing my best just to try to get a KO, just to get some momentum going my way. But my Noivern is getting worn down, and I can't even U-turn in this situation because uh, the Rocky Helmet recoil is going to take me out. So I'm forced to hard switch out into my um, Tauros, but here i'm pretty positive that i expected him to protect because that's what he's has been doing so i thought that the switch in would be free and i can see how much damage i'm doing with my body slams here and i'm feeling okay about it maybe i can force some sort of an over over prediction where he doesn't protect in the situation but realistically he always protects in the situation he gets the the wish protect off and i'm in a position where i can't really do anything i guess part of me thought that he might also switch out trying to um preserve his Nihi Lego or something to that effect, but I don't know. I went for Earthquake on his Protect. I guess it didn't, never really mattered. Maybe I was preserving PP. I don't really know. Regardless, now I'm in a really bad position where I can Body Slam and it's doing decent damage, but it's never going to be able to overcome Wish Protect, and even if, you know, Wish Protect fails on me, uh, uh, even if I can somehow, you know, Place of mind games where I can break through which protect he can always regenerate her as he's doing right now to get back into the tank growth and I'm trying to deal some damage to this dang tank growth and uh, he's always gonna be, be, be able to regenerate this back too I do just barely not enough damage it might have been a roll who the heck knows at this point but uh, we are at a complete stalemate I mean I thought I played really well in in the beginning and now I'm in a position where He's getting all this momentum back. I, I'm really, I really just cannot do anything anymore. And I do have flamethrower for this scissor, but I am toxic and I can't really afford to give up another mon. Um, because now, I mean, honestly, this is where I'm starting to think about um, potential timer, and I can't give him a mon advantage because um, he has probably, he, he's, he's probably going to end up at almost every exchange with more HP than I do. So, so I have to be cognizant of the fact that. Um, 
I always win if I have a mon advantage in a timer situation, but if we're even on mons and he has more HP uh, on his overall team than I do, then I lose. So I'm very cognizant of the fact that I am fi up, up 5 to 4 at this point. And I have to maintain that advantage. I cannot give up another Mon, you know, just carelessly or needlessly. So I have to play very, very carefully with how many Mons I do have for this end game. But um, it's pretty obvious now that uh, he can't really touch my mill tank too, too well. Um, we did see the Nihilego that I assumed was Scarf till the bitter end. I I never find out that this thing is not scarfed. Uh, he told me after the match that it was an expert belt Nihilego, but also an expert belt Nihilego with a speed boost, meaning that, um, meaning that it was not strong enough to do over half to my mill tank, which means that my mill tank can always one v one it, milk drink on it, all those types of things. Scizor here uh, is not really doing enough to really break through my, my, my mill tank and the Alamola can't really uh, do anything without being able to toxic stall me and I do have heal bell on my mill tank and uh, Tangrowth was never really going to do anything in this matchup but uh, I have to play my, my mill tank's HP pretty carefully and you can see I'm just switching out for all this regenerator for just to stall out turns um, and also another thought that I did have I did think about PP a little bit but um, I it was never really going to be a concern I could tell from like the way that the match was shaping to be uh, that that PP was not going to be the biggest issue in the world so I didn't really play too too much to the whole PP uh, situation and we're, we're only about a, a dozen or so moves away from the end of this match where one of us forfeits but uh, I I really cannot do anything to this Alamola, and yeah, also, it's dawning on me that uh, nothing on my team carry Toxic, and I was talking to, to Randy HLD after this match, and it was funny because uh, we went over my sets, I showed him my, my pace and everything, and uh, Darmanitan really should have been carrying Toxic, uh, that was pretty obvious, but also my Tauros, I... I carried Iron Head as a fourth move on my Tauros, and it wasn't really necessary for uh, this match. Now, my only argument was that I thought that the extra damage over Body Slam might come in clutch at some in some capacity against the Kiram in particular. I thought that that would be a kind of um, fun tech against the Kiram in case he felt safe taking a Body Slam, and then I can uh, break out the Iron Head in that situation. But uh, that never came to really matter and if my Tauros had Toxic, this entire shape of this match would have been uh, different. I would have finally had a chance to take out this Alamola. He would have played his Alamola very, very carefully. It would have probably forced him to play his other Mons uh, more aggressively be and keeping the Alamola in the back to not accumulate too much Toxic damage. But uh, obviously that never happens. and. Um, yeah, maybe that would have given me an opening to take out one of some of his other mons and gotten some more momentum going. And once, um, and once, uh, one mon goes down, it can start to snowball. But, uh, we can't break each other because I'm always going to be able to switch between my mill tank and my scissor and be able to heal them up. And, uh, I, he can do the same thing between his Tangrowth and his Alamola. So, we're both in very not great positions to be able to do anything against each other this is going to happen for a bunch of more turns and at this point where we start to dm each other um he starts to just straight up ask me if i'm playing for timer but um some moves i, I just went to timer like genuinely trying to game out like is do, like do i have any way of breaking this down me by any like sequence of moves that i can reasonably make and i really didn't think i did so i played into the stalemate a little bit but I really was trying to figure out a way to kind of break this Delme and potentially win this match, but uh, it just never happens. I end up pulling punching. I don't know why I did that. Um, I guess. I guess I just wanted a chance. I don't know. I don't know. Regardless, at some point, I, I really started to get frustrated. It's, it's, it's probably around this time, like in match time, but at some point, I, I started to get frustrated and I think and I start thinking to myself, I should not be playing this recklessly. Um, 
because uh, I just start to get frustrated and start like clicking buttons and uh, and my uh, HP I believe on my mill tank in this exchange gets dangerously low and I start to think oh no I, I really need to like start to focus because if I drift focus and I allow um, Amon to go down needlessly then that is a timer loss if it goes all the way to timer and that's going to put me in a worse position than anything else could so I'm trying to refocus I'm trying to Keep everything healthy obviously i go back into the scissor and go for roost and i can always go back into the mill tank and go for milk drink and it looks like we're just a few turns away from a forfeit but uh this is going to be a really familiar sequence he just goes for a wish i'm miserably out of focus but uh it's gonna be fine he's gonna be able to wish up all the time and there's really nothing I can do. You can see the tang growth got so low from Tauros, and it's now all the way back up to full. I think just off of Regenerator alone, he hasn't even really... And, and yeah, he gets a wish, but a wish for more or less no HP. Um, I'm not too, too sure what to do here. Uh, it's a very difficult situation for me to break. I don't think I ever could have done anything differently here to kind of break this stalemate other than possibly... Other than possibly uh, brought Toxic on a few mons, but once my Tauros and my Noivern got low, I had to become really protective of them, and I couldn't recklessly switch them in and in or out because uh, the, because the Rocky Helmet on on Alamol prevented any any contacting moves. Oh, and there's the forfeit, and. Uh, I just wasn't doing the, the right amount of damage. I mean, maybe I had a singular chance when my Noivern was still choice backs, but once the choice backs got knocked off, that made it very, very difficult for me in the end game, and I just didn't have any type of firepower for my for the Alamol in particular. I think the biggest mistake was probably letting down my Galvantula so kind of brazenly because that really allowed his Alamomola to just sit there on the field for as long as it did, and. In my head, I was thinking that uh, getting webs up that second time was worth giving up my Galvantula, but it simply wasn't. Uh, again, I did that only assuming that the Nihilego was scarfed, and uh, by being able to to have the force the Nihilego, the scarfed Nihilego in on webs would have allowed my Tauros to handle it. But I should have been more confident in my other checks to it to just literally check it. Um, I wasn't I thought I needed that extra bit of insurance with the sticky webs but I don't think I did I think I would have been a lot better off if I had just taken out the tang growth with a bug buzz or something like that and uh, I could have started to get some momentum going he wouldn't have had as many switch plays maybe the Alamomola goes down eventually I honestly don't know what happens but the way that that match played out was uh, pretty brutal I think and I think it all just kind of snowballed for me once I let the Galvangelo go down again, but that's going to be our match. We do pick up a win. For as, as solemn as I am about this, I think I could have won this match uh, much more convincingly, but we do end up getting the win 5-4, to four, and uh, that's going to be our match. We are in. We're going into the final three weeks of the season with a 4-2 and two record, and I'm really excited about it. I think uh, my team plays well together I have a lot of fun building with it and uh, the rest of the season looks like a lot of fun so I really do want to come out with a respectable record try to um, do whatever I can in in making a playoff run and all these types of things but with that that's gonna be it for me thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back again really really soon APA Academy this weekend as well as a couple backlogged videos that I just want to get out there to for the sake of getting out there but also, uh, ICBA will be coming back. ICBA will be uploaded this Monday, I believe. And then uh, some other stuff to come really, really soon as well. But with that, uh, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be once again out.